Okay, thanks very much, everyone, for joining us here for this three match press conference ahead of the semi final of the SUG New Zealand versus uh, Pakistan. We're joined by Matthew Hayden, who will be taking questions from the room here, and also any questions fired into us over Zoom. So um, we're starting the room here. Any questions? Uh, show hand. Good afternoon, Matthew. Good afternoon. Uh, how would you describe this roller coaster ride of Pakistan? Colorful, yeah. maverick, sudden. Yeah, Shadab actually said something very significant in the dugout the other day when we were playing our last match. And uh, he said, welcome to Pakistan cricket. <laughs> Meaning that on any given day, anything can happen. And on that particular day when Netherlands beat South Africa, it was a significant moment for us in the tournament um, and a very, very significant moment um, for the team in general around its potential and reaching that potential. Um, lots of prayers as Pakistan woke up to see that result. 232 million people can't be wrong. And uh, as a result of that, I feel that there was a very much an uplifting tempo in our group, um, which made that match against Bangladesh almost a certainty for Pakistan. So incredible experience. And as you say, rightly, it has been a roller coaster ride, uh, but a ride that I wouldn't have it any other way because the last World Cup that we went into were undefeated and then Australia pipped us in the semi final. So, um, really significant for Pakistan. Matthew? Uh, here, here, here. Yeah. Uh, I know okay, Babar and Rizwan is number one uh, opening pair, uh, mm. but this World Cup is not good. Uh, do you not think uh, Babar is, uh, should be run down and middle order? Um, Baba and Rizwan rightly are number one combination. Um, if I can take your minds way back to a different World Cup, and that was the 2007 World Cup, and Adam Gilchrist, you know, had a, for his standards, quite a lean World Cup ahead of uh, that undefeated campaign for Australia. And if you remember that last match um, against Sri Lanka, he went on to score an incredible 100 um, and realised his potential in that tournament and awaken the world once again to the fact that he was such a premium batsman in that format of the game. So, you know, it's always nice to have two players, um, you know, that have, that have felt the pressure and we all feel the pressure at any given times in our career. Um, no different for the number one combination, no, no, no different for the number four um, ranked uh, T20 player in Bubba. And uh, don't, don't be surprised whatsoever if you don't see some fireworks because very special players don't often stay down for long. I think neither Pakistan nor India has played that top of the line game, but still they are in semi finals so everything to look up to. Yeah, absolutely. Great point. As I said, the last campaign, we, we were just on a high from pretty much the start of that tournament. Um, won all of the... Um, the pool matches and then were pipped by a better side on the day. And, and it's typically T20 cricket where you see such sways in, in on the roundabout of the outcomes of wins and losses. Rightly, as you say, though, we've gone about our cricket in a pretty unique way. We've had Shaheen who came into the tournament with some injuries and now is starting through bowling efforts. He's starting to really hit his straps and you know, that's a dangerous combination. We have four quicks. Um, they're all significant players in their own right. Um, Wazim Jr., the, potentially the youngest of those, but Nazim as well, who, if you remember the last match here against South Africa, bowled beautifully. Um, so, you know, those four guys, and sh led by Shaheen, uh, is such a significant um, part parcel of this team. Harris Ralph also has lots of experience here through the Big Bash League. Um, and our batting, you know, whilst it hasn't gone absolutely to plan, it's meant that our middle order players have had to step up. And young Harris has been one of those. Great story, really significant story of any World Cup, not even in the squad, and now performing like he should have been there from the start. So, yeah, there's, there's ups and downs in this tournament, but um, I really believe yet is our best game, which is a huge threat for oppositions. Matthew, just to follow up on Harris, actually, obviously you mentioned he's only just come in. Before he played that first game, 
did you say anything to him about how to approach it? Is it just he's naturally come in and played the way he wants to play? Yeah, it's all him. It's uh, I've watched him closely um, over the last month. And he was the one individual that came into every net session and faced all of our quicks. I mean, for me, that was like facing McGrath, Warren, Lee, Gillespie. If you could face those batters, uh, those bowlers, and you are playing well, you knew that you had a great chance of making runs um, in the actual game. So it's no surprise to see Harry come in and play so beautifully. He's got a very good uh, technique on our fast, bouncy wickets, and he's got a freshness. One of the things as an outsider coming into this tournament is pretty much the entire cricketing community with the amount of program is fatigued to some degree. Match officials, uh, support staff, players playing 24-7 around the clock. That's the program. So to have a young, fresh face with, with nothing to lose, nothing really to gain, but just play with great freedom has been a wonderful expression for him personally, but also for Team Pakistan. Uh, Matthew, uh, we have seen you working closely with Babar Azam in the Nets. What advice you have given to him because he is struggling for the runs at the moment? And what he, uh, in, re in reply, what he said about his form? Yeah, we all know that in any given career, you have significant moments of ups and downs and the challenges and the, and the humps along the way. They cement you and your greatness, how you achieve under adversity. And there's no question that Baba has been under some adversity. Um, that will only make him an even greater player. So there's lots of people that talk, um, but those of us that have been in the change rooms with Baba and that realise that cricket, when it's all said and done, is a very difficult game. You can't continue to keep on punching out, you know, hundreds and fifties and you know strike rates of 140 plus. There's got to be moments in time where um, there's a lull um, and as we all know about the weather, once there's a lull, there's often a storm that follows. So, you know, look out the rest of the world because I think you're about to see something very special from Bubba. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation. Sorry, Hello. <laughs> there's been a lot of conversations about the, the parallels with the 1992 campaign. Has this been referenced, discussed as as part of the processes in this in this camp? Uh, it hasn't directly been influenced, but you know, one of the great parts about media is that uh, all of us, players, support staff, we all understand the importance and significance of, of campaigns. And 92 was a memorable one for Pakistan cricket. Um, it was also a tournament that was plagued by the, by the, uh, the nuances of Pakistan cricket. And that is that there, there's not just a dominant performance, there's, there's a performance you know, that gets challenged and then Pakistan suddenly turn up and they're dangerous and formidable. Um, and that tournament was exactly that. I can remember, remember watching that actually from, you know, the bleachers uh, just as a fan and thinking Pakistan cricket with that fast bowling attack uh, and that batting lineup is something that we really have to look out for as Australian cricketers. Um, and as it turned out, so did England. So, you know, it was a wonderful campaign. And, and of course, you know, those forefathers of cricket um, a lot of these players, they grew up admiring, watching, looking at the way that they played um, and then hoping one day that they could also be great like that side was. Um, Matty, a T20 game is such a power game. Um, generally, the subcontinent cricketers or the batters mm. are not big in sort of stature as you know, someone like yourself or from Australia or England. So how do you talk about generating that power game um, and in terms of coaching, how have you gone about that? Yeah, power game in T20 cricket is, is still being explored because there is a mixture, and this tournament has showed that really significantly, um, that there is a threat still with the new ball. Everyone talks about, you know, overs one to six, the power play being, um, you know, something where strike rate, and we were criticised about this in the last World Cup as well, was six and seven runs and over. But in essence, that base, if you're four or five down in the power play, it doesn't really matter about your power because you're at, a, you're at the momentum and the mercy of the momentum of the game. So there's a tricky balance still being realised. And I think the subcontinental um, players, and, and when you look at the, the tournament um, so far, guys like Surya Kumar Yadav who are playing 
you know, beautifully, you know, through that middle to late stage with a competency of all areas of the ground with access shots, innovation and access, they become threats. So it's not always about the power. Um, and as I said, I think as cricketers, we are all trying to come to grips with when is power, when's that foot go down on the floor, when does it decelerate and look to preserve. Um, and a lot of the matches have been very close matches um, and the tricky balance between pre preservation of wickets versus exploration of innovation has been really why I think a lot of these the sides that are here now in this tournament are still here. Australia is a great case of that. It's got power to burn, but it hasn't been able to handle the new ball. And then it's left itself vulnerable through the middle order. Uh, good luck for tomorrow. Sorry, Matthew, over here. Uh, looking at your performance here against um, South Africa, probably one of your stronger performances mm. over the course of the campaign. Was there anything that sort of clicked in that particular game in terms of the campaign, or is there anything here at the SCG that you think might give you guys an edge over your opponents tomorrow? Yeah, look, I love the way that in that match against South Africa, again, it wasn't Baba and Rizwan show. It, it had to as a batting lineup, dig really deep, and uh, Shadab on that particular occasion was unbelievable. Um, so the middle order definitely having to stand up. Um, it's been special. Uh, and it hasn't just been through one particular player. It, it has genuinely been three or four players that have uh, really had a go with great intent. Harris was magnificent. That was a real turning point for our team. When he walked in the bat, it was basically a, a breath of fresh air that, that just awakened Pakistan's uh, batting lineup. I, I, I sense, though, Sean Tate has done a really good job in preparing the fast bowlers for this track as well. You saw Nazim put in a really good performance on that night. Um, a good comeback as well from Harris Ralph, who was expensive in his first few overs, but then learnt to bowl on this track really well. If any conditions in Australia suit us um, as subcontinental players, I think this is the venue. So lots of positives came out of that match. And the arrival again uh, of Shaheen, who's our premium fast bowler, um, and our leader of fast bowling as well. So lots of solid performances went into that, but in particular, I think the arrival of Harris, the brilliance of Shadab, and then our four fast bowlers just being on the money. Matt, I know you're here with the Pakistan team, obviously, but just your thoughts on Australia's exit. It almost appeared, or there's been some talk, that it was a lack of ruthlessness in some ways that they you know, finished their group stage at cost them, which is something that hasn't normally been associated with Australian team, particularly mm. your era. Yeah, the Australian team's got some thinking to do. Um, there has there has to be some freshness. And, and I think one of the great strengths of Australian cricket has been its ability to be able to recognise when to make that gear change into a different playing roster. Um, I think full credit and respect has to go to the players that played this tournament, certainly deserve to be there. Um, but a little bit like Mark Wall giving away to someone like myself after World Cup campaigns, it's always been quite ruthlessly preparing for the next World Cup. And they seemingly come around more often than not now. Just 12 months ago, we were sitting here talking about the T20 champions, and that was Australia. Here we are again with, on the eve of another semi-final. Um, so the tournaments are coming around thick and fast, but certainly from an Australian cricket point of view, there has to be some planning heading towards World Cups. They're the premium events. They're the events that everyone across the world plans for, and Australia, unfortunately, just didn't get it right. So what's the difference you think, Haydock, between 12 months ago when Australia won uh, and this time around when um, with only one team change, you know, they didn't make the single final? Sorry. I got your line there, Mel. Um, yeah, not a lot of difference, Mel. I mean, you and I have been involved in this game a very long time and understand that one or two performances can change and shift the momentum in a tournament. And Australia just got on the wrong side of the green. I mean, here I am saying that when we were relying on Netherlands beating South Africa, you know, I think that'd be, you know, not very prudent to make too many comments. We all know that the Australian cricket team, the culture of Australian cricket um, is ch has, has been challenged over the last four or five years. Um, there has to be, you know, some improvements in, in departments, especially I think their fast bowling attack. Um, and I think strategically as well, um, you know, not playing Mitchell Stark, our premium bowler ahead of that game, was a really significant moment as well. 
Um, you know, so little things, but just performances. Davey Warner, you know, his his performance in the World Cup wasn't as special as what it was in the last World Cup. You know, he's a premium player. Um, we, our expectations, like a Bubba, you know, like all the great players, are so high that when they don't quite get it right, they get exposed. Um, and then they have to raise their game and challenge themselves and become better players and then play better tournament cricket. And tournament cricket is very hard and it's very different for the common program as well because you don't get second bites at the cherry typically. Um, so not a lot has changed, but what I'm suggesting now is that there does have to be some planning ahead of the next World Cup, whatever that is, whichever one it is. And it's coming up thick and fast here in Australia as well. Okay, that's enough of the questions in the room. We're now going to shift over to Zoom where we have two quick questions. Um, Glenn, can you give us your question, please? Glenn Lama. Yes, here I am. Thank you for uh, chatting to me, Matthew. Hey, very quickly, I'm calling from, I'm, I'm from New Zealand. Uh, what do you think of New Zealand? What challenges, uh, or big challenges, do they pose Pakistan in the semi final? Yeah, thanks. Um, look, this match, they played against Australia and they got 200 on this particular wicket, actually. Um, and Dev Conway was, you know, incredibly destructive during that, uh, that particular match. Um, and Australia capitulated, bowled out for 111. So clearly when you have a, a big batting effort, and I think New Zealand have some really destructive uh, players, um, you can be put under pressure with the bat. Uh, and that almost was their perfect game, I felt, in the World Cup. Um, so yes, yeah, some you know huge balance. They've also got a terrific bowling attack, a well-balanced bowling attack, um, a good mixture of experience as well. I mean, I even played against Tim Southey. That goes to show you how much experience that that Tim has got. Um, but again, he turns up. He can swing the ball. Um, Lockie Ferguson has got great pace, lots of experience in T20 cricket as well. So poses good threats, and then they've got good off-pace bowling as well. So you know, I think. Like New Zealand sport in general, um, it, they they really punch above their weight. They believe they can win this tournament, and they've got the potential to do that. So lots of threats, you know, to our camp, no question. And just a quick question, one last question. You played them in Christchurch last month. Does that really have any relevance? Do you think you beat them in that final? Any relevance? Do you think heading into tomorrow? No, I don't think specifically there's relevance um, other than it's always nice to have the rub of the green um, on a cricket team. Um, look, really, it comes down to, Glenn, just that sense of belief and that purpose, you know, and T20 cricket has a, a wonderful way of, of creating a roundabout where you get spat out the wrong side of it because someone's had a fantastic day. Um, it's one of the few versions of our sport where it's not just a test of of uh, skill sets under pressure, um, but it's also a test of innovation. And I think New Zealand have really, you know, shown some wonderful innovation, you know, through the course of this tournament and for the last number of years, you know, narrowly um, missing out also in the last World Cup. So lots of threats for us, as I said, but on the day and any given day, there can be one star player that can take it away from you, which is rare. Um, in the other formats of the games, you've got to have multiple contributions. Thank you, Matthew. Great. And just time for one final question, please, from Ijaz Wazim Uh, um, uh Matthew, uh, my question to you. Uh, last year, Pakistan lost semi-final against Australia, and this year, Pakistan lost uh, uh, Asia Cup final against Sri Lanka. So, Ooh. what is the what is the change you've seen in this team to not lose another knockout match? And one more: Are you missing your emotional friend uh, Justin Langer in this World Cup? <laughs> emotional friend yeah I spent my 51st birthday with Justin Langer in Perth you know so it was that was lovely for me personally but yeah, it's always nice to have a brotherhood around the game of cricket um, I see lots of those uh, in the room amongst me as well um, we all understand that you know big games are about handling pressure and handling adversity and there's huge ex expectations and challenges uh, one of the things that I've always admired about Pakistan cricket is their ability to be able to turn up in, in big moments and by gee there's a big moment ahead of us tomorrow um, very very special to be a part of it um, and also I've seen you know great cha changes and, and this side has continued to challenge itself from the last World Cup 
got on the wrong side of the results uh, in the Asian Cup, but still, that's a completely different tournament. So the way that we've prepared is excellent. Um, the way that uh, the middle order in particular, from the batting sense, has stepped up to the plate has been excellent. And as I mentioned before, those fast bowlers, man, I, I mean, there's four of them and they come at good pace. And uh, that's exciting for the game, not just T20 cricket, but also test cricket. And the lineup as well, you know, beyond this for Pakistan cricket as well, producing wonderful fast bowlers has been, you know, a great testament to um, the country itself, from Wazim to Wazim um, you know, to Waka. They're just, you know, it's a beautiful synergy in Pakistan cricket. I mean, there's nothing like fast bowling against high quality batting. That, that's the challenge. When I turn up in disguise with my sons at any game, that's what I want to see is that challenge between bat and ball, uh, in particular, the new ball, fast and velocity matters. Australia is poached on that for many years and has had good uh, results because of it. Okay, great. That's it. Thanks very much, Matthew. Thanks, Thanks, Matthew.